Welcome back to the channel, where we make Lean Six Sigma simple and practical for engineers and problem solvers like you. Today, we're tackling two important metrics often confused with one another, OEE and OLE. We'll break down what they mean, how to calculate them, and most importantly, the difference between the two. Part 1. What is OEE? Let's start with OEE, which stands for Overall Equipment Effectiveness. This metric tells you how effectively a piece of equipment is being used compared to its full potential. OEE combines three factors. Availability, is the machine running when it's supposed to? Performance, is it running at the design speed? Quality, is it producing good parts without defects? Multiply these three together and you get OEE. For example, if a machine is available 90% of the time, runs at 95% performance, and makes 98% good parts, the OEE is about 84%. In Lean Six Sigma, OEE is critical because it pinpoints equipment losses like downtime, slow cycles, or scrap. It's often tied to the six big losses in manufacturing. Part 2. What is OLE? Now, let's move to OLE, Overall Labor Effectiveness. Instead of looking at equipment, OLE measures how effectively your workforce is performing. It also uses three factors, but with a human focus. Availability. Is the labor force present and working during scheduled time? Performance. Are they working at the expected productivity rate? Quality. Is the output they produce meeting standards? So OLE gives us insight into how well people are contributing to production goals, factoring in things like absenteeism, training gaps, and skill utilization. Part 3. OEE versus OLE Key Differences Here's where most people get confused. OEE focuses on machines. OLE focuses on people. Both metrics use the same logic. Availability, performance, and quality, but applied to different resources. Think of it this way. OEE asks, how well is my equipment performing? OLE asks, how well is my workforce performing? Together, they give a complete picture of productivity. If OEE is low, but OLE is high, the problem is with the equipment. If OLE is low, but OEE is high, the bottleneck might be in training, staffing, or operator efficiency. And if both are low, well, you've got a bigger challenge. Part 4. Why this matters in Lean Six Sigma in Lean Six Sigma, data drives improvement. OEE helps identify waste in machines. OLE helps identify waste in labor. When used together, they prevent finger pointing and highlight exactly where to focus improvement efforts, whether it's on equipment reliability or workforce effectiveness. So remember, OEE is equipment effectiveness. OLE is labor effectiveness. Both use availability, performance and quality. But the resource being measured, machines versus people, is what sets them apart. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up, subscribe for more Lean Six Sigma insights, and drop a comment below. Do you track OEE, OLE, or both in your organization?